Hey everybody, John here. Okay, time for another adventure. Today I am near Robeson's Mining World. Now, uh, that is a area that's usually open on the weekends. It's about five miles from Aguila and about 20 miles from Wickenburg. Excuse the uh, noise. It's about 20 miles from Wickenburg, like I said. Uh, it is open on weekends. It is available for public tours. I have watched video on this before. It is a cool place, but that's not where I'm going. On the other side of the mountain from Robeson's are some exploratory shafts. I was actually up here about five months ago um, doing some free-range exploring before I was even uh, full-time doing the Retired Renegade Adventures and found some exploratory shafts. And I promised that I'd come back, and today is that day. Now let me go ahead and show you. It is windy again, of course, but really old sign. Kind of has that 19, kind of has that 1960s vibe. That's off. It, that's it off in the distance. Let's see if I can zoom in on it a little bit. because there's so much glare. Let me get back in the shadow here where I can see. So anyway, as I was saying, on the other side of this mountain range right here are some exploratory shafts. And uh, I was ill-equipped on that day. It was just a uh, random trail that I decided to take. I did go up to it, but uh, today we're going to explore a little deeper. So come on along. Let's go take a peek. You know, you would think on one of these trips I would actually uh, be able to go someplace and it not be windy. But such is not the case today either. Um, so I hope this doesn't get drowned out too bad, but we're going to go ahead and uh, start on our way to those exploratory shafts. So let's get some dirt. Now, like I said, you can see ropes and top in the distance, but there's going to be a turnoff. We're going to veer left here in a little bit and go around the other side of the mountain. Okay, the good news is, is I know where I'm headed, or at least where I want to explore again. And I'll go ahead and uh, turn this around so you can kind of get an idea of where we're going. Up the side of the mountain here, right in front of us, you can see tailings where it's been worked. Now, just above it, and I don't know that I'm going to make it up that way, is a wash, but you can see some white spots. But the other area that I'm interested in is off to the left just a little bit. And again, I don't know if, because there's so much glare on this screen, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it. But these areas have been marked with, uh, it looks like paint. If that's, uh, and when I went exploring last time, I did make my way across over to it. Uh, there is a shaft that goes back in there. Now I didn't have good lighting, uh, best camera, anything like that. And it was getting later in the day, so I didn't want to chance it. Uh, today I'm better prepared for it. I actually do have some gloves this time, so if I uh, do manage to grab cactus rather than something else, uh, hopefully I don't have a hand full. So I'm gonna shut this down. As you can see, there is a sea of cactus between me and where I gotta go. So, Let's get hiking. Now one thing that makes me agree that this might have been a good area to work is uh, when you look at this field that I'm standing in, or this face, this is all volcanic rock. And 
Generally, it takes heat, and a lot of it, to create the vein work that contains the minerals that are so valuable. So when you look at all this, this is all old volcanic rock. And there's that tailing, and we're going to keep on heading that way. Okay, so here's the back half of that Model T, or the back trunk section. That's the mine tailing. This is how far I've had to come up the side of this mountain to get to this little piece of car. Off in the distance you see my Jeep, and a little thing down that is the closest trail. There's no trail getting up here. So, that would really make one wonder how and why this is even up here. Still got a slot mechanism. And rocks have pile up underneath it. Excuse the wind if it's making it difficult to hear. I still don't know why though. That's the weirdest part. All right, I'm gonna walk over to this tailing. And I think it was the one above that had the first of the two uh, shafts or at least exploratories that I found. So, I'm going to shut this down, hike over, take a peek. Okay, there's a lot of sparkle in this tailing rock. And I'm going to go ahead and let you see what I see as I come up over this rise. We are walking to the edge of the tailing. There's different color in the rock here. And there's a tree growing out of the middle of it. But then there's this trough. And up a little higher up this trough, you can see, maybe you can see, there's another pile. And I think that was where I found the uh, first of at least two uh, exploratories. So I'm going to hike up there. Okay, about halfway up that wash is the first of the little exploratory areas. And on top of it is this really cool sitting this way I would have thought it might be a geode. Sorry, but it's not. But somebody cracked it open to see what was there. But it was just sitting on top of the this rock like that. Now this isn't a very big opening. So I know this was just exploration only. I'm going to try to sit down in here. Oh, sorry. See how far this goes. If I can find my... Find my flashlight here. All right, I'm gonna shut this off for just a second until I find my flashlight. Hold on. Okay.
I'm going to take my time with this. This is much bigger. It looks as if they It looks as if they uh, hid this. I'll show you on the way out because it's a really small opening. I thought it was just exploratory. But uh, they've got timber wedged up here, at least small, almost looks like a pallet. And it opens up some so it gets a lot bigger, about four feet high. So let's go see where this goes. It's dry. It seems pretty solid. It's a little, a little chinky in the top there, but as long as I don't make a lot of noise, we should be fine. All right. So. Situate the. The camera and the flashlight here. Okay, this is uh, I don't see anything extraordinary with the type of rock this is. I'm standing pretty straight up right now, so this is almost like five, five feet high. This is way higher. And pretty undisturbed. I'm assuming you guys can hear me okay. The rock is reddish. There is some vein work right here. We got some. Okay. It gets wet in here because this is mud. It is six feet high where I'm at. I have to admit, this is far more than I expected. I'm glad I trusted my instinct to come back. Because this goes back a lot further than I anticipated. The rock is almost purple in color, red purple. And it's starting to get smaller again. Even as long as it's been since it's rained, this ground is still moist. I have not said the word cool, I don't think, yet on this entire adventure. Um, but this qualifies. I think I just saw a bat. There's some definite vein work right there. It is 
eerily quiet in here. I am not alone in here. Definitely a bat. And he's not happy. And he keeps flying back towards me, so I'm assuming that I'm at the end of the cave. There's timber back here. Come on, bat. Get out of here. Now, I don't know if this is stratification or if this is water level, and I would believe that this is water level. This cave gets all filled up. Okay, I'm at the end of it. There are boreholes back here where they might have considered going further, but I guess they decided not to. You can see how far in I am. It's quite a ways. And Mr. Bat is flying his way back here, so he's not happy that I took up his home or she. Okay. Well, if I found nothing else along this trip, this made up for it. Because that opening, getting in here, they hit it pretty good. Because that opening was only maybe two feet, barely big enough for me to fit into on my back. I just wanted to shine a flashlight down that hole and see what was back there. And this is what was back there. So wow. Looks like animal droppings. So something else lives back in here too. These are too big for a bat. You can see them in the distance. He's a typical bat, he's not like in daylight. All right, well, we're going to have to, I guess we're going to have to share some small tunnel space here. Okay, he went by me, finally. Okay, you can see that I had to ditch some stuff. And that's all the, all the bigger that hole is. So I'm gonna shut everything off, crawl my way back out. Okay, for perspective, this is how small this, this hole is. We do for adventure. Okay, out of the hole. From where I'm sitting, which is right in front of it, this is over my shoulder. 
I'm going to pan around. You would never, ever know this was here if the tailing didn't give it away and you didn't walk up this wash. There is no way you can see this. I mean, my Jeep. Down there. Off in the distance, besides the dust bowls, is a gila. And that's, that's it. Okay, so that was worth it. All right, I'm gonna drink some water, rest, catch my breath, and then scramble up to the next one. And I already was surprised because I definitely didn't expect that little hole to produce that mine. So, don't know what other surprises I'm going to find, but uh, if I don't find anything, this was worth it. All right. See you in a bit. Okay. We're pretty close to the second tailing now. Looks like there might be some copper remnant. I'm pretty sure that was not the primary. You can see off the tailing up there. And if you look at that mountain or that mountain right there, you see a little hole just above it. I thought it was paint. Could be something else. But that's what uh, prompted me to look here in the first place a few months ago because uh, it was visible in the distance and almost made it look like it was marked out. But if you go by the fact that I don't see anything else, that timber in the first hole was really rotted and the fact that there's the back part of a Model T up here, I really don't think this has been worked in a long, long time. So we're going to keep heading up and uh, show you some more when I get there. Finding more and more evidence of copper as I go. Get this, there, there. That's where that tailing is. So, it's like following little breadcrumbs. We'll keep going. Okay, I do see what they were chasing anyway, because you've got all this color. Excuse the camera right here and you're following the vein work up this rock and you can't really see it from here but I'm gonna try to lift this up and right above me is where that white spots at and where I know that other uh, mine is or cave so that's where we're headed and uh, they did do some exploratory digging right here but neither one of these is uh, an actual opening so we're going to keep on heading up. I am at opening number two. And again, you would never know this was here unless you were looking for it. Because you've got this slot in between the rocks, and you can see it right here. It's maybe five feet across. You can see a gila off in the distance, and that's really kind of a cool shot. But right behind me, Another opening. So, this one's a little easier to get into than the other one. Um, so, we're going to head on down this embankment here and uh, see what's back in there. Okay, everybody. Here we go again. Round two. I've ditched my other camera, my sunglasses. <clears throat> That's not good. I hear bees. Oh, well. 
I've got some glory. Let's just hope I'm not sweet enough for them to, to like. <laughs> and this is it. They didn't find much back here. Exactly opposite of what I expected. The little hole, I didn't expect to find anything, and I found a 150 foot, 200 foot mine. This one, which has the bigger opening, goes back maybe 10 feet, 20 feet. Probably 20 feet. Still, you don't know until you get looking. Alright, heading back out. Okay, made it back to the Jeep. There is one more area that I wanted to check out. Uh, down the road a little bit further. Uh, there is one area that's greener than all the rest. It's like a mini oasis. Don't expect to find anything, but it looked interesting all the same. So we're gonna head up that way before I consider heading on out. Okay, this is interesting. Kind of where that green area was. I mean, you can see the trees. It says on our really older sign, open pit area. Uh, okay. And then really faded, I think it said keep out. But I am curious. So let's go check out this open pit. And that would explain why it's green, because it went down further to the water table. All right, time to explore. Okay, I got the wind blocking off, or the Jeep blocking off the wind, but this is where that uh, open pit sign was. So I don't know if they were doing maybe some pit mining here to see if they could find something. It's not exactly a sign you see every day. And it's green down in there. The question then is, and I don't want to get too close because you can see where is, again, why? It's like a mini little canyon out in the middle of the desert. How bizarre. Let's see what this looks like. People were digging down to find out what that they got out of the I see that they did find some stuff. That should be a nice kill site. Looks like cows have been down in there too. All right. Yeah. That was interesting. Go back to the Jeep. And, uh, actually, make it to that oasis where you can see off in the distance over there.
this oasis looks artificial. I mean, the trees are natural, but that looks like uh, digging or tailing, almost like that open pit I was just at, but larger. So um, I am curious about what I'm going to find back here. Those mountains are definitely not natural and take a look. See the pipe? And uh, cows. Alright. So I've got company. company at that. Wow. Okay. There's a whole herd of cattle here. I'm going to have to hike back up in here a little bit and see what's in here. I'm just circling around getting an idea, see if I see something more interesting than this huge, huge pit. And this is literally way out in the middle of nowhere. Now I can understand why the cattle use it. Because there is, it is so green here. Wow. And everything's in bloom. Alright, well, I'll catch up to you guys when I uh, go inside. Okay, this ought to be interesting. This is that big oasis area. And, uh, it's been dug out. The question is, why? Why in the middle of the desert? Now, I did see, as you saw in the other shot, some conduit. Oh, okay. I see why now. And that's why it's an oasis. They made a big pond of a lake in the middle of nowhere. A stock lake. Okay, that makes a difference. Now I understand. It's really windy up here. Okay, that's cool. That explains it. Now I can leave with my curiosity satisfied. Well, that's it for today. Very satisfying. I am a happy camper. Today turned out way better than I anticipated. That first uh, two foot opening into a 200 foot mine was awesome. There is so much more for me to explore out here. I'm gonna have to look at Google Earth and Earth Explorer, see what else I find. But you've got this mountain range, that mountain range over there, uh, Swansea was on the other side of that, off in the distance. 
Now, on the other side of Aguila, you've got the uh, Harkivar Mountains, uh, and there's another mountain range over there. Actually, there's three mountain ranges over there, all have interesting stuff and old mines. Uh, this is sort of my stomping grounds. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for coming along. Like, subscribe, follow me, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Bye now.